Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called Offline by developer Paul Clariseau with music by Nox. It's a little bit of a difficult one to classify but the developer describes the game as a short unending daydreaming experience and what I've seen so far of this and only played a couple of minutes is essentially it's sort of a surreal abstract metro car train conductor simulator in that you can play with all of these various bits that you see on the dashboard here and see what happens and that's sort of your visual feedback of course though things aren't always that simple uh, so let's just start playing with stuff and just see what happens okay it's a uh, kind of not really the, that there's going to be a whole narrative that's going to necessarily come out of this it's more just to experiment and you know see the visual feedback as it comes so first things first got a little bit of a lever here uh, i'm going to grab this and i'm going to pull it backward as you can see, our train seems to start going in the opposite direction. Uh, there's no feedback beyond that. It's reached the bottom of its turning ability, so we're just going to hold that for a second. It looks like the tunnel's disappeared completely, and one of the UI elements is actually sort of flickering now, the, one of the speed dial things there. So let's let go of that, and man, we flash right back to the train tunnel, as it were, a second ago, as if nothing ever happened. All right, so that one's not going to do a whole lot for us. What's this button over here? Seems to put up a bit of, uh, sort of a blurry bloom effect over everything and causes some sort of sound distortion to happen. Not really sure exactly what that's for. What's this? Oh, there's a button here that seems to flash all of the... the lights on all the UI panel stuff for some reason. Okay, we've got that down. This... seems to control the ambient panning or something like that. Uh, the soundscape seems to be sort of phasing in and out when I turn this slowly. Uh, if I leave it pointed roughly towards the camera, I think I'm getting the most sound back out of it. Uh, and then turning it to the right completely stops it. Alright, what about this one? Oh, that actually seems to add extra ambience if I turn it all the way over. And takes it away on the left. Okay, so let's leave all the sound going on. Got a few dials here, or sliders. Seems to be responsible for turning on all of the various flashes along the train tunnel. We've got our headlights and our warning lights there. Do these buttons do anything? I don't think I've touched these. Oh. Okay. We can make a loud train sound. That's good. Uh, that seems to turn up the distortion for some reason. I don't really want a noise filter over things. And this seems to manage the saturation for the colors. So we can actually sort of go into a bit of a melancholy grayscale almost uh, when we turn that all the way down. I think probably people want to see colors though for the most part, so we'll leave that on. And this is responsible for the lights in the cab, I suppose. You can get a little bit moody with things. Very nice. What about... Oh, we've got all of these buttons here. Okay, so this first one seems to be a camera right behind me. But when I click it a bunch of times, it looks a little bit like our figure shifts somewhat. I want to turn on a few of these lights just to see if they change. Yeah, they do actually change what's in the camera readout there. I was just testing it, I guess. You can see right there is a great way to tell. That also seems to change the uh, filter going on on this television screen on the right side, too. Uh, so we've got another switch here that seems to show us some sort of creepy, transparent ballerina phantom. I don't know what that's about. Probably not going to talk to that for too much longer. Some sort of little spectral dot. I can't really make out exactly what that is. Unfortunately, we can't get, like, right in the face of all of these controls. I would have kind of liked to see them a little bit bigger. Uh, but no, there's no moving around in this train cab, unfortunately. I would have liked to also be able to, like, walk around in this in, uh... Oh! Okay, that was obviously the break. I get that. Uh, and we've turned off all the lights. Alright, let's, let's turn those back on now. Um... Okay, we just wanted it kind of moody like that. How do I make the tunnel light up again? I think it was brighter a second ago. Wasn't it? Alright, well, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we have those lights on anyway, so that's good enough for now. And then we've also got this little monitor over here that seems to show a whole bunch of eyes. That's pretty creepy. Uh, more eyes. More eyes. More eyes. More eyes. More eyes. Static eyes, and this seems to be showing that creepy ballerina phantom again. Think that's about all we can do without actually moving the train forward. 
Alright, so let's speed this up a little bit. Put this maybe back on the static option just so we don't have to look at that creepy thing. And uh, as we start to speed up, we'll eventually sort of enter the state of meditatory hypnosis, it almost seems like, if that's even a word. Oh, we can also pick up the phone, too. I'm not really sure what you can really do with that, but we can pick it up and move it around. Uh, so the sound gets a little bit louder. There's a lot of screeching going on. I can turn off these lights if you'd prefer, if that would make things easier or harder to see. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, I have the headlights on. Where did those go? Oh, what's this all about? There's... Oh, that's cool. I didn't see that before. Some kind of flickering, like, plasma beams showing up. Um... Where are my headlights? These. Okay, I had those before. That's what the problem was. It turned all of that off. Alright, so we're just traveling down this endless metro hall, I mean, tunnel. There's nothing really happening right now, but we have no idea what could happen if we get further in. Maybe there's going to be a stop at some point, maybe we're going to discover more creepy eyeballs, or who knows what else. Should probably continue to play with some of these other options in case they start to show up as different things. Getting kind of like a night trap vibe from changing all these monitors. Oh, there's a bit of a purple haze now happening in front of my train. Uh, should maybe try managing... Oh yeah, so this now has turned purple for some reason. I guess our warning lights are no longer warning us, they're just... hazy. I keep turning on the distortion filter like I want that, and I don't want that. Um, what other options are there that I can play with? I guess I could put these back on. It's quite colorful. You turn the headlight off. Yeah, we get the most flickery lights this way, I guess. Interesting. Using the word daydreaming to describe this is actually really accurate, I think. Something very ethereal going on here, and I can't quite place it between the eyes and the sort of weird transparent phantoms that I keep seeing. Uh, also the silhouetted version of myself there. I don't know, it's kind of depersonalizing in a strange way. I don't really know how to place it, there's nothing else exactly like this. Uh, but it is a very unique experience, and that's what I'm all about finding on this. Can I operate the windshield wiper somehow also? I don't think I've found a control for that yet. Now I'm gonna kind of guess that there's maybe some behind-the-scenes randomization going on here, because there's two events that I've noticed that I'm, I haven't seen both of the times I've played this. Uh, so what happens is occasionally things can happen that will cause this game to reset. And so far I haven't had one of those happen, but I have had that light flashing event where there were like little plasma trails going along the railway. Uh, and I didn't see that the first time I played it, but the thing I saw the first time I played it I haven't seen in this so far. So I guess there's probably something that could change or be different each time. And I'm kind of curious to know what other options there might be for that. Oh, wow. I guess I should have probably issued a bit of a seizure warning on this. I didn't realize that was going to be a thing at all. Okay, so now that we're traveling, whatever this button is, I thought this was like an intercom or some kind of thing. Uh, it seems to cause a flashing halo effect, and then also this one seems to cause that strobe. I'm trying to get like as many lighting effects going at the same time as I seem to be able to. Very hypnotizing. Uh, what other control options are there? None of these seem to be changing or doing anything differently. Should probably look at all the monitors again, just in case something has changed with those. Do I not have... Oh, okay, I thought I didn't have a static option anymore. Sometimes you just want to look at the static, right? I'm wondering, too, if there's, like, some kind of hidden control that I haven't noticed yet. Because the first time when I was playing around with it, I didn't even notice that there was the handbrake up on the top. Uh, which is kind of a big one, honestly. Yeah, I don't see much else going on. What if I slow it? Oh, I haven't even sped up to full yet. I guess that's why we're screeching so much all this time, huh? I thought I was all the way up. Apparently I was not. Oh, I hear a train. What's that all about? Turn off... Turn off some of these lights. Is there a train up there? No? Doesn't seem like it. Alright, let's go back up again. Oh! I thought that was smoke, it's it's the phantom. Oh, there's a there's a light! Stop! 
I saved everyone's lives. Also, that was the shortest stopping time I've ever seen a train have before in my entire life. Um, so that was the event that I mentioned before. The train will show up every now and then. And uh, I guess if you don't stop in time, you don't get to keep playing, because it will crash into you and it makes a horrifying sound. And then we restart again back at the beginning. Alright, so now that I've turned off all the lights, you can see very clearly it's got sort of one of those... Oh, there's the train again. Turn it off, turn it off! I don't know how to describe exactly what it is. It's like a... there's like a... a device you can buy that's got a light inside of a... like a paper container that turns, and as it turns it sort of makes this almost stop-motion animation uh, that'll play on a wall or something, sort of like a projection, and I'm getting that impression from this phantom ballerina. I kind of wish there were more effects and weird things that are happening in this, because I'm really digging the atmosphere. It's quite immersive and very odd. Like I said, really nothing like anything I've ever seen before. I probably should just crash into the train now. It seems to show up every single time I go at full speed. So that's life's way of telling you you're going full throttle. You need to dial it back a little. Yeah. That's pretty creepy, right? I was kind of thinking, what if I try and shoot myself at the train full speed and then do my brake at the very last second if I can? I wonder if I can still save myself. Because the fact that the other train seems to go away... I don't know, I start to wonder if, if it's even a real train? Like, if, is this a phantom ghost train? I mean, there's a lot of ghostly things going on here. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready! Three, two, one, and... Stop! Okay, I stopped it, it still didn't matter. We got wrecked. I love that little chime that comes in after the train crashes, like, as we're rebooting our life back into the train conductor's position. It's got this sort of strings kind of instrumental thing happening. It's quite, quite lovely. I really enjoy this, actually. This is a strange experience. I don't know exactly how to classify it, like I've said a hundred times. Uh, but I love little things like this that you just have no idea where they're going to go, and there's this little kind of exploratory quality to understanding what you have access to and what you can do and what's in your power to change, and sometimes that there's permutations that are beyond your control of what you can affect the world with. You know, more of this. I'd love to see more games like this or more experiences like this. Uh, so that's going to pretty much be it for offline. I'm not really sure what else there is to do, unfortunately. Uh, but if you guys discover anything kind of interesting or cool, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'd be very curious to hear. Uh, I very much appreciate recommendations as well. If you know anything else that falls into a same sort of subcategory of this type of gameplay, uh, please feel free to link me that in the comments as well. Uh, so if you'd like to try out offline yourself, the link for that is going to be right in the description. It's a browser game. You don't even need to download anything, so you can play it uh, right in whatever it is that you're watching this on, most likely. Unless maybe you're on mobile, in which case uh, the Unity web player probably wouldn't work in that case. But, you know, other than that. So hopefully you enjoyed the episode. If you did, consider leaving a like on it. It does help me out greatly to keep the series going. We're very, very close to the 1,000 consecutive episode points, so I do appreciate any support in keeping us toward that. I think we're, like, about a week away from it, honestly, so it's not going to be long. Uh, and aside from that, I just want to say thank you, of course, for watching, and I hope everything's uh, going okay for you guys. I am very, very thankful that you've stuck around for all of these episodes. Look forward to bringing you a ton more, and I hope you have a fantastic night. Talk to you all later.